Welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. Okay. Hello, everybody. This is Evelyn Hershkowitz, Rita Services Librarian at our Turn the Page podcast. And today I have with me a special guest, Soraya Wilson, her name is. Her new book is The Chemistry of Love. It comes out on February 2nd, and it has gotten a starred review from Publishers Weekly. And they say abundant pop culture references and nerdy quips only enhance this utterly adorable. That's pretty nice. And Library Dern are also saying this adorable romantic comedy, the fake dating trope, is taken to another level of banter and nerdy references. Anna and Marco throw around. Adding to the fun, Anna's grandparents and their bird pet birds will have readers and stitches. A fresh and fun romance from Wilson. So I think that's pretty nice. And then just now I went on to Amazon and it says number one bestseller in clean and wholesome romance. I didn't know that they even had a section with that. So. Congratulations. And also you're you. today best-selling author. Yeah. Well, it's I, count- really fun. I counted on Amazon. I counted 24 books. Is that correct? Is that how many you've written or? Yeah, that, that, that could be right. I don't keep track. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. I, yeah. I'm bad at keep, people ask me. I'm like, I don't know. I just keep writing. But yeah, that that's sounds about so right. Great. That's so good. So how did you get into writing? Um, Kind of a funny story. I uh, my oldest son had some some medical issues when he was young, and he was diagnosed with autism when he was three. And we were young, and I was pregnant. Like, and they're talking about these therapies that were going to be like ten thousand dollars. I mean, this was like twenty years ago, and it might as well have been ten million, right? Like, there was no way, and there was no GoFundMe or anything like that. And so I kind of started like thinking about it, praying about it, meditating on it. How do I get this money? And the answer was write a book. And like, as if someone had actually even spoken those words. And I'm like, well, that's stupid. I'm not going to do that, you know? And then one of the things we did was some neighbors came and donated stuff to, for us to have like a multifamily garage sale. So because this was in the dark ages, I had to send out press releases, you know, and um, a reporter contacted me and came to the house and I opened the door and she said, before I come inside, I have to ask you, are you a writer? And I'm like, that's such a weird question. Why would you ask me that? And she's like, well, your press release was so well written. I just assumed that you were a writer. Yeah, it was almost funny. like the heavens parting, you know, the yeah. clouds. And I'm like, okay, I got the message. So that, that's that's why I started writing. So what was your first book? It was uh, it was called The Secrets in Zarahemla. It's like a historical romance fiction. It's completely different than anything I do now for a very small niche publisher out here in Utah. Um, but yeah, that was a very long time ago. And yeah, it's, it's, it's grown from there. Okay, so the book we're talking about today is The Chemistry of Love, which comes out on February 2nd, which is a week from Tuesday. Um, I loved it. It was a great story. I do have questions, but I don't want to give anything away. So if you could just tell everybody what the book's about, please. This is always the hardest part because this <laughs> is a different different kind of writing than I normally do. But yeah, it's about a girl who's a cosmetic chemist, um, which is people who make makeup, you know, and she is in love with her boss and there's non fraternization rules at the company. So she quits her job. She's also got a terrible boss over her, quits her job and makes this grand gesture to tell her boss that she's in love with them. And when they get to this party, he announces his engagement. And devastated, she runs off to the bathroom and gets drunk. And she's met by a very nice man who turns out to be her boss's half brother, who's the CEO of the company. And uh, he offers to fake date her because they're so competitive and things progress from there. It's a very good story. I love the cover. The cover is all different color lips, which is so cool because it really plays into the story a lot. Um, What made you come up with this idea? I mean, are you uh, into makeup? Are you into chemistry? I mean, where did you come up with? I, none of the, none yeah. of the above. <laughs> um, I, I got the idea for, there was something I watched where it was like, you know, a, a thing like the fake dating thing. And I'm like, I haven't done a fake dating in a while. And I would love to have it be kind of brothers that are competing. And so that was the first idea. And then I got this idea that I don't want to spoil it for anybody in the book, but um, something that Anna designs 
that was the second idea. And I was like, okay, so she's going to make this piece of makeup thing. And I knew nothing about it. I, I am not a science girl at all. Um, I will say I am a nerdy fangirl. So all of that part of Anna is like 100% me. Uh, but with the, the cosmetic chemistry, I, I, I do a lot of research and I looked it up and I found it very hard to find what it's like day to day. Like, what is it actually like being one? And I found this girl and I don't remember how I even found her, but she went to the same college as me. And I reached out to her on Zoom, I like, or not Zoom, sorry, um, Instagram. And I, I DM'd her and I said, this is very odd, but I'm a writer. I wanna write about a cosmetic chemist. Would you be willing to meet with me? Wow. And she's like, I would love to. And so she got on Zoom with me and we talked for a really long time. Um, and I was sending her emails all throughout the book. Like, am I doing this right? Is this right? So there is a lot of research in it. Um, some people have made some reviews of like a chemist would never do this. And literally everything my chemist does, the real life chemist has done. Like these are based on her real stories, her real life lived experiences. Um, but like she has a chemistry lab in her bedroom. Oh my God. And I said, do you really? And she's like, I do. And she's like, I make La Mer for like, you know, five bucks. Like it's so easy to do. We know what you're doing. And so that's in the book, you know? So yeah, a lot of her experiences, a lot of the really funny stuff that happens like actually happened to her. And I'm like, can I use that? She's like, go ahead. Oh, so, that's so cool. Yeah, uh, it was she really was cool. So, and she was so helpful to like, yeah. cause I'm like, you must have a background in chemistry to know no. all this stuff. What no. is your background? I, I actually majored in history in college. And now knowing what I know, I probably should have majored in anthropology because dates and dry facts do not interest me which is what I majored in I'm very interested in the culture I'm very interested in how people live and you know what it was like for them that stuff fascinates me so I love I love historical fiction like I'll I'll gobble that stuff up yeah. um have you written yeah. historical fiction also a little bit or mostly almost all romance a little bit of historical romance but it's not it's not fiction based I yeah it's all romance that's I figured that out very early. That's what I wanted to write. I, I was a snob in high school because I was in like an AP English and stuff. And my mom would buy Harlequins by the truckload. I mean, we mm -hmm. got that, you know, the monthly subscription where she got the box every month. And I was so above that. That was so beneath me, you know, but I remember one time kind of being desperate. I was a reader and there was nothing to read and I was had read everything. And so I grabbed one of her Harlequins and like to this day, I remember, I wish I remember the title or the author, but it was about a shipping magnet and hit the red haired daughter of his rival and they hate each other and they fall in love. And I remember at the end, like oh, they love each other. Like I was so excited okay. and you know, I, I'm kind of like, I'm trying to recapture that feeling ever since, but I loved it. And I started reading romance from there. Um, and I just kind of figured out that even in other stuff that I, I'm a huge fantasy fan, I love fantasy fiction that I'm looking for the romance and like so much of it's written by men that mm -hmm. I feel like they don't always get that romance right, you know? Um, and I, I'm i like, where's the hand touch? Where's the lingering glances? Where's, you know, the stuff that I love? And so I, I'm i naturally drawn to it. I want the happy ever after. I, you know, and people are like, oh, your genre is so predictable. And I'm like, you're welcome. That's the point, right? right. Like right. it's supposed to be, you know how it ends. That's the comfort of it. You know, nobody reads a murder mystery and goes, oh, they solved the murder in the end. How predictable. You know, like, <laughs> yes, they're going to solve the murder at the end of a murder That's mystery, true. you know. Right. So, yeah, at the end of a romance, they're going to fall in love. So, yeah. Right. We all need that little bit of comfort, you know, and wholesome romance, clean and wholesome romance. Not everybody wants all that smut and all that kind of stuff. So the wholesome romance is very nice also. Are you comfortable writing? It's a more than that or you just like the wholesome romance part of it i what i tell other writers when you know i get kind of asked about this is what do you like when you're reading if you're someone who loves those spicy scenes like you're like yes i want more of these if you're writing romance then yes be writing them i'm a person that kind of skips them you know i just like get me back to the romance part you know this is great but i want the romance stuff so I think for me, it was it was that, that it's what I enjoy in my reading. And so it's reflected in my writing. And I think kind of from a market standpoint too, hmm, excuse me, I, I was noticing that there are readers who only want the kind of really sweet book. Or they don't mm -hmm. want anything on the page. And then there's readers who like really spicy stuff. And when I, the spicy people will go the other direction, not always, but they're willing to read stuff that doesn't have spicy, right. but it doesn't work the other way. Like right. your people who prefer the sweet stuff are not coming over. And so I'm like, well, 
would I be better served? It's what I kind of prefer. It's my comfort zone. And then maybe marketing wise, this would, you know, do well for me just because I think there's more flexibility. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I, it's not a judgment thing or a morality thing at all. It was just very much, this is what I wanted to do in writing. And so I did. Yeah. Some of you, who were some of your favorite rom-com authors? Oh gosh. Um, Christina Lauren, I think yeah. is amazing. Uh, um, I love Sarah that's... Adams. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Sophie Kinsella is like one of my all-time favorites the Shopaholic series. Mm -hmm. She's amazing. Oh, who else? Becky Monson, I love. Um, yeah, there's so many. That's like so hard. It's like yeah. Uh, Terry Wilson's another one I really enjoy. But yeah, there's a there's a lot, and there's just such a wide range of whatever you're looking for out there. And I love that about the market today that you can find whatever you want. Right, right. It's wonderful. There's so much. I I love rom coms. I also love listening to audio books. And I see this one's going to be out on audio also. I I cannot listen to my audiobooks. I okay. hope they're good. I really it's, it's very odd. It's um I've tried, you know. Uh there was one that I wrote, The Paid Bridesmaid, that was actually nominated for an audio award. Like there's like a, a body and yeah. you know, they had a nomination and, and it was nominated for best narration for a romance novel. And I'm like, that's awesome. I still haven't listened to it. Oh my so goodness. I'm assuming it's really good, but when I've tried in the past, it's like when you hear yourself speaking, like if somebody's filmed you and you hear yourself talking and you're like, and it's like, this is cringy, you know, oh no, I don't want to listen to myself. Uh, it's like that because it is my voice. And so it's like listening to yourself on tape or on a, you know, a video. And so it just makes me cringe and I can't stand it. So well, you don't it's do very the hard. narration. No, no, it's they have somebody else. For that. Yeah. And you still can't listen to it. Nope. It's wow. my words. I know it. So, and I can tell like when someone's changed something, if I go back through uh, like with editing, I'm like, I didn't write that. And like, and I know an editor changed it because I'm like, that's not, you know, I can just tell that it wasn't me. So yeah, that happens sometimes. Wow. But, that's crazy that you can't listening to your audio books. I can't. Not even the one. <laughs> nope. Do you listen to other people's audio books? I have. Um, I have a lot of friends who are really into it and really mm -hmm. recommend it. I just haven't gotten into that space, I guess. Okay. Uh, I'm more, I will have like the TV on and I will listen to TV shows. And that's why like all my friends right now are really into like K dramas, Korean dramas and stuff. And they're like, they're so good. And I'm sure I'd love them, but I don't have the capacity to sit down and read subtitles right now. So mm -hmm. I just listen to stuff like as I'm doing other things. So mine's more TV shows, I think, than than books. I mean, I have in the past, like Pride and Prejudice was just incredible the audio on that one Rosamund Pike did it that was awesome um but yeah I have sometimes for like long car rides or things like that mm -hmm. but it's not something I, I normally listen to now okay okay now I'm a big audio book I'm a big audio book listener but I don't like to listen to romances with sex in it yeah that could go a little like dicey listen. out loud yeah I don't want to hear it I could read it but I don't want to I don't want to hear it's it. a little different it's having it described like yours, I could listen to because it's clean and wholesome. So that yeah. one I would be able to listen to on audio. But basically, I usually don't listen to romance. I read them. So, but I, they happen to be my favorite genre right now because it's, you know, it's going to end happy. And it's nice to be able to have it all wrapped up yeah. and everybody's happy. And, you know, it's it's just great. It really is. It's great. So do you plan your books? Do you outline? I do not. Okay. I wish I did. I am, I am someone that people go, how do you write? Do not write like me. I don't recommend it. My way of writing is actually terrible. And it's, I kind of get an idea. I kind of know, like, I have like a seed of, this is kind of what I want to have happen. Um, and then I just sit down and write it. And it's torturous and difficult. And I think about my friends who outline, but like one of my friends showed me her outline board, like all these post-it notes. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I would, I would harm myself. Like, there's no way that I could do this. It's just, it would, that would just be impossible for me. So yeah, I think part of trying to figure out how you want to write is a big part of writing, but mine is I just do it and I write it in about a month. I like, it's from the time I get up till I go to bed, I am writing. I am wow. in this story. Um, and then I, the next day I, I edit, I kind of go back through what I had written so I can just pick up, you know, where I left off and I go forward. So I'm kind of editing in that way as I go, but pretty much what I turn in is really close to what actually gets published at the end. You know, that obviously sometimes there's 
things here and there, little details that get changed or maybe a little scenes added in, but you know, not, not that often. It's, it's mm -hmm. a terrible, terrible process, but it works well for me, unfortunately. So you really, how quickly do you get a book from writing to publish? Well, the publishing part of it is long. And I actually am with a publisher that's fairly quick. Um, and that it may be like a year by the time I turn it in until it actually comes out as a book and other publishers, it's anywhere from two to three years. Yeah. So it's just, a, it's a Mon really Lake. long process. You with Mon Lake? Is that who you with? Yeah, Amazon. Mont Lake. You're with Amazon. Okay. Yes. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. Are they, are so they they're, they're a little faster. Oh yeah. They're easy I love them. With. Love oh, them. That's so great. So are you writing a book a year? It's it's two right now. I could probably do more. Um, and so I'm kind of looking at that and keeping what I'm doing with my romantic comedies. And then maybe I get to write some YA fantasy like I've always wanted to, or, you know, just something a little different to kind of challenge me and, and branch out in some different directions. I think that would be that would be fun. Wow, two a year. That's great. Wow. Good for you. Yeah. But do you do anything else? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, are you I, just writing all the time? I'm not. Like I said, I, I can write those in about a month. So for ten months, I'm really kind of not doing anything but resting in between books. I mean, I, I'm I'm doing like publicity stuff and you know newsletter and things like right. that. But yeah, I have friends who I have a friend who's like writing eleven books this year, and that's low for her. What is she writing? What she's like, I'm really pulling back. So mine are not as fast. I have. She's, she's writing like sweet romances too. Uh, Lena Johnson is her name, but she writes those things like, yeah, some, some authors are just so prolific. It's astounding. And then other people, it takes them five years to write one book. You yeah. know, everybody's different. Do you have a reading group that you get together and criticize, critique, criticize, wrong word, critique each other? No. no. I, I learned pretty early on in my career um, because everybody recommends that. Everybody says, oh, you need to belong to a yeah. writing group. And that's really important and it's going to really help you. And I, I joined when I first started out and it just, everybody was writing such different genres and styles than me. I didn't really find it helpful. And then I kind of moved on past that. And I remember I put out a book and I was going to kind of self-publish it. And so I asked some readers and friends, would you mind reading this and like being beta readers for me and giving me your feedback? And it was like, it was all over the place. I had one reader who's like, your, her your hero is so masculine and so strong and i love that about him and then literally the next person the same exact scene was like your hero is so undecisive and not masculine at all and i hated it and the scene was terrible and i remember sitting there thinking well, which voice am i supposed to listen to right. which beta reader and if 10 different people are saying 10 different things who do you listen to and it really kind of drove it home for me that the, the person to listen to is you mm -hmm. that you're the writer these are your words and yeah, you improve and you go to classes and you read books and you learn how to be a better writer and you read other writers to improve your craft. But at the end of the day, it's it's your words, it's your story. And I am very fortunate in that relationship I have with Montlake that they really support that because they say the same thing. At the end of the day, it's your book, your name's on it. What you want to say in this book is up to you. And we'll give suggestions and we'll, you know, professionally edit this, but that, you know, really and truly this is this is your story so i don't put a lot of stock in writing groups but you know i'll tell you like brandon sanderson you know who writes fantasy his writing group is everything to him like he's hired those people professionally to be part of his life to work for him you know yeah. so he i i sat in a class that he taught a bunch of college students and he's like oh get a writer's group get a writer's group get a writer's group that's the most important thing you can do mm -hmm. so again i think this all just comes down to your preference and how you work and what works best for you and it, it didn't work for me what do you think is the most important thing to be a writer? Reading. I think reading is the most important thing. I am I am shocked by the number of people who tell me I've always wanted to write a book, but they don't read. I'm like, how can you know anything? How can you know the expectations of the genre? How can you right. know what people respond to? Like what's, you know, and if I say to a romance reader, you know, the hero crossed his arms and leaned, you know, in a doorway like that means something to them they're like oh I love when he does that you know or mm -hmm. it just we have these little things that are kind of inside you know tropey sort of stuff that that you get when you're a reader of, of it and yeah I, I am surprised by the number of people who who want to write but don't read so I think reading is the most important yeah I know you said you've always been a reader have you always wanted to be a writer nope 
I I did not grow up with that with that dream, to be honest. Um, I think if anything, I was kind of hoping I could write like for Hollywood. But again, from being from the dark ages, I had no idea how that happened or, you know, how you even got to go do that. So it just was never even on my radar. And I, I think I might have toyed with the idea, like, wouldn't it be cool if I could do that? But it just didn't seem like something someone like me could do, you know, someone from where I grew up and, you know, where I come from. And here I am. So, yeah. Like I said, I counted 24 books. So that's <laughs> yeah, it's working that's pretty, pretty impressive. That really, really is. That's really Thank you. impressive. What are you working on now? I am starting a new book and I'm really excited about it. It's a, it's a book about a woman who is meeting back up with her high school nemesis and she's a hypnotist and he is out to expose her for being a fraud. Oh, so, I like that. Yeah, she, yeah, she hypnotizes him. And then he, uh, there's a fire alarm and she doesn't get to properly pull him out of the, of the session. And he starts acting very out of character. And so she's trying to fix it, you know, before things go too far. So that sounds great. When is that one coming? Yeah. Out? <laughs> I would guess probably January, 2024, around that oh, time okay. period, winter 2024. So yeah, it's, it's a ways off, but mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think it's about when it should, but we'll see. Stuff like that changes all the time. You must, do you have something else um, later this year coming I out? I do. I do. I have one coming out in July and it's called The Hollywood Jinx. And it is based on, yeah. The Hollywood Jinx. Okay. Yeah, uh, It's based on, um, I, I don't know if you ever heard this story, but uh, in Australia, there was this little town that did a promotional video because Chris Hemsworth, you know, the guy who plays um, Thor in The Avengers, Mm -hmm. that he is like the ambassador of travel for Australia. So this little town in Australia did a video saying, Chris Hemsworth, please come to our town. And it went viral. I mean, he even responded like, you know, hey, next time I'm in the area, I'll make sure to stop in. Like, it was really cute. And so I, I saw that and I was like, well, what if the star actually came? And what if, of course, he's single and doesn't have a family like poor Chris Hemsworth does, but, right. you know, that, you know, and so the heroine has to to take him in and keep an eye on him. And it's about him being in a small town and he's this big star and, he feels like he kind of ruins everything he touches and he doesn't want to ruin things for this town. And, and uh, yeah, my heroine's trying to keep him at arm's length because she has dated wealthy men who tend to cheat. And so she doesn't really want to fall for him, but of course she does. So that sounds really good too. Thanks. Do you go on promotional tours? Or are you just doing everything through zoom? Um, it's been mostly zoom, you know, for the last couple of years, for obvious reasons, I'm, I'm doing, uh, I did a couple of book signings last year. I did, um, okay. book Bonanza with Colleen Hoover and then, um, Ooh. Polycon with Jennifer Armentrout. I was invited out okay. to those and I'm, I'm going to do a signing out here in Utah, uh, in a couple of weeks, but yeah, it's been, it's been mostly online, which, which is kind of nice. I mean, I miss getting to see people in real life and talk to them and, and interact, but you know, and I love that I can do stuff like this, that I could be talking to you right. in New York and right. we could exactly. be having a conversation and meeting all new people and all new readers, you know. Right. I say that's the home. only silver lining in the entire pandemic is that we have gotten to speak to so many authors that we never, it never would have happened. It just yeah. would have. I mean, you know, the ones that came in when we were doing podcasts originally, it was only when they came in to speak to us. But yeah. because of Zoom, it's it's been amazing how many people we get to speak to I mean it's it's just great it really is it is it really it's, is it's let me do things like um people have been inviting me to come to their book club right you know I've been doing that more lately and I'm like yeah That's reach fun. out to me I'll, I'm happy to drop in that sounds fun oh, I thought yeah. so you people are able to have authors you know they read the book and, have the author, and I've told people at these book clubs I'm like reach out to those authors who you're reading like on Instagram and stuff or their publicists you might be right. surprised to who's willing to actually come you know right. that you think yeah. oh they would never and they might yeah so. I just I just booked a pretty well-known author that's gonna zoom into our book club so I'm very excited oh, awesome. about that so yeah that's really yeah, cool. it's great and I did interview Adriana Trigiani that was okay. also one so that was a big author yeah. Also. so yeah this is this is like I said the silver lining and in, in this horrible pandemic which yeah <laughs> seems to be ending but Oh, that's that's why we need rom-coms yes <laughs> so we could read these and forget all of our troubles and everything else that's going on in the world and everybody could live happily ever 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 after so that's that's my favorite that makes me very happy how about do you read abby jimenez do you read any of hers i haven't 
but okay. I kind of have a funny connection to Abby Jimenez, which mm. I think is hilarious. And it's that when her first book came out, The Friend Zone, right? I had a book called The Friend Zone that oh. dropped on the exact same day. Really? I, I thought not even a week apart, literally the exact same day. Wow. So I just thought that was, I haven't read hers yet, but yeah, I, I thought that was pretty funny. That, you guys should have exchanged books. You should have. Well, we ended up getting reviewed by Publishers Weekly because of it you know because oh, it's okay. like hey there's two books and I'm like I'll take that you know that works yeah. too so oh, that's that's pretty funny she wasn't well yeah. known when her first book came out at all but she's yeah. she's certainly taken all you know she's taken off pretty well she's doing yeah. pretty good. she really is yeah I, I enjoy her books she's got a new one coming out soon also so I do recommend read the friend zone <laughs> you, <laughs> I will. You, will, you will like it you you definitely will no doubt about that so I thank you so much for joining us today here at Turn yeah. the Page from the Syosset Public Library. And we definitely could get together again when the Hollywood Jinx comes out. When did you say, July? Oh, I love that. Yeah, in July. So yeah, I'd love that. Um, okay, we'll, we'll make a date and I'll get in touch with your publicist and we'll chat again when that one comes out. Because I really enjoyed, like everybody who's listening, I enjoyed the chemistry of love. We're going to have a copy here at the library. If you're interested in it, please give us a call. We'll put it on hold for you and you can pick up your copy. So thank you, Soraya, so much for joining us. I'm going to close this chapter of Turn the Page. Have a great day. Thanks. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. It's time to close this chapter of Turn the Page. Join us for the next episode.